Hey YouTube, it's Nubian122 and I'm making a video about the uh, Johnson's Controls uh, Lithium NME batteries from uh, Jehu. Uh, he recommended them. I believe the company is Tech, Tech Supply. Uh, they're on eBay and they have them. You have to purchase them in sets of uh, like a whole pallet, which is nine batteries in total. But you know, if you're gonna set up a battery bank for a solar system, you know, it's the way to go, really. Anyway, uh, I figured I'd give you guys an overview of what the batteries look like, disassembled and that sort of thing. Maybe give you an idea of what you're gonna be looking at doing when you get these batteries. Uh, first thing, here is the spec sheet for the batteries. 24 cells, they're in 12S configuration by two and you have the dimensions of course output terminals that's a custom terminal that I'll show you in a, in a couple of seconds uh, each one of these are going to be 30 amp hours uh, total voltage 44.4 looks like that's discharge voltage I think you can take these up as high as 50.1 or 50.2 the chemistry of the battery is uh, NME, NMC rather I I'm trying to remember what that means, but it's one of the lithium uh, profiles. Each battery supposedly gives you 2.5 kilowatt hours. I'll be testing that. Output rate at 10C, uh, 138 watt hours per kilogram. Supposedly that's a very good uh, ratio when it comes down to, to batteries. And this one has a cooling chill plate, which you see here. You could actually run water inputs into these and flow water through so it chills down the cells. That's something I don't think I'll be using, but you never know. Anyway, uh, this is kind of what they look like, you know, all together. They come with the leads all set up if you wanted to use BMS or, or cell monitoring, that sort of thing. They're all set for that. They also have two batteries, literally in one. You basically have one battery here, one, one entire bank of cells, and then a second bank of cells. Each of the cell banks are 42 uh, point some odd volts, 44.4. 44 Inside or on the side, you'd see the specialized configurations I, I was telling you about before. That is what the battery terminal looks like. You have one, you have two, and then on the other side, another two, totaling four. A positive, a negative, I'm sorry, a positive, a positive, and negatives going across either side. The idea that I'm going to do is I'm going to parallel these two so that you will have basically only one set of positive and negative to change to the next battery. In parallel, so that you know you can get you can get your 48 voltage, as well as the capacity, you know, doubling with every battery. You guys have to forgive the uh, generator sound in the background. We're down here in Florida, and of course, power's still out. So, what else is new? Anyway, this is one of the custom cables that it actually comes with. As you can see, these connectors are very special. I found them at a, at a distributor that you can actually buy them. They're somewhere around maybe five or six dollars a connector. And you know, if you're going to make customized cabling, you're going to need a, a bunch of them. So I'm trying to find alternative ways of doing that. This is a look at the cells from the top. And you have a duplicate set on the other side of the battery, as you can see. Looks like they have temperature sensors here and there and on the other side. You also have, like I was telling you before, all the various leads per cell available to you at the top of the battery in those connections. so that you could easily use a tool such as this. 
to monitor cell voltage. Yeah, obviously you'd have to, I would think, cut this cabling off at the uh, connector and wire it up in another JST the way that you want it laid out so that it makes some sense. And my idea here is going to be to take these contacts, the positive and negative, because I thought about trying to take this out first and somehow putting in a screw terminal so that you could put your wiring on this, excuse me, your wiring on this securely to parallel these points, this one and the one on the other side of the battery. But since these will not come out, they're pressed in, as you can see here. It's going to require something a little different. What we can possibly do is use one of the screws, go get more screws that work, you know, the same millimeter, except a little longer. And when you come in through the top, you could, I guess, hook up your maybe a battery lug of some sort, something like this, you know, to the top on all four of the different points. And then from that point, you could now easily run some, you know, two watt cable from positive to positive on on both sides. The positive here, the second positive that actually is going to be up here, and then vice versa with the negatives, and then still have the stud left that you could now put on your positive negative cable that you're going to change to the next battery. And you'd have to configure all the batteries exactly the same way so that you now have the nine of those batteries all working in parallel to give you the maximum amount of, uh, of kilowatt hours or amp hours in this case.